everybody and welcome to the channel and I hope you're ready for finger style guitar number one C right is it C <laughs> I have to go back and check but I think it's one C and this is where we're gonna go to the B7 okay so uh, tonight I'm gonna take it uh, we'll, we'll start at the very beginning we'll go from the E to the A back to the E and then we'll work on how to get that B7 down and I love that B7 and it, it, it kind of uh, at that point that's where you're oh I don't know what the right word to use is I guess that's where you go super retro uh, old soul old school kind of uh, finger style guitar now look I think I've made this clear in a lot of my videos I'm no expert <clears throat> I if I can help you be better than you were uh, I'm having a ball right uh, and, and to prove that point, uh, I think I've said this before too, I, I kind of do this for a living, uh, not guitar, but, uh, but and as we said, we're not going to discuss what I do for a living ever, but it's along the same vein uh, from the standpoint of uh, just trying to help somebody get better at something, okay? So from for that, I would say, I'm just happy you're here and and you're interested think of all the guitars that got bought in these last couple of years when all this uh, stuff happened uh, and people ended up buying a bunch of guitars my guess is 90% of them are gonna go in a closet somewhere and uh, never to get pulled out again uh, now that people are back out again but for the 10% of you uh, that or going through those beginner uh, guitar things that I've kind of put up. That's the reason I did that on the beginner guitar was I knew there was a two years worth of the population of the planet out there buying guitars. And uh, uh, it, it, I just hate to see these things go to waste. <clears throat> this guitar finally got some play. It, it sat in a case, I think, somewhere for 60 years uh, uh, before I ended up with it. So, but it's okay. She feels better now, <laughs> so and that's a good thing. Uh, before we uh, get too too deep into this uh, and get to the B7, uh, I ran across a, a couple of YouTube channels. I've, I've actually run across quite a few lately, and, and I'm going to mention them as I go along. Luke, you're on the list. Uh, uh, Hayes is on the list. Uh, there's uh, quite a few people out there that I just I've just grown to think a lot of and really enjoy the interaction with, and I. I never pictured the YouTube community being quite like this. Uh, I don't know what I expect. I don't think I had any expectations. So, uh, but very kind people out there on YouTube. Let me tell you. Uh, now I know there's <clears throat> there's got to be some difficult folks, or it's it's uh, it's uh, no fun, right? <laughs> but most of the people out there with these channels are man, they're super nice people. So I met two people. One of them, the first one is a, a lady named Kathy Short. So. What a set of pipes that girl has on her. Uh, she has a cross between a Stevie Nicks and a Nora Jones. All right. And, and it is, uh, I, I love her voice. I just think it's fantastic. So I'm going to drop a link to her channel in the description. And another lady named uh, Donna Dunn. Now, I think Kathy's in the States. And Kathy, you can correct me if I'm wrong if you're watching this. But uh uh, Donna Dunn is actually in Ireland, which is interesting because I have business occasionally in Ireland and uh, uh, and, and I always loved it over there. The people over there treat me like, uh, well, I'll just say they're, they're very hospitable in Ireland. Uh, I spend most of my time in Northern Ireland, so uh, when I am there, but uh, uh, for business purposes, but uh, I would say that uh, <clears throat> I... I some of the some of the some of the nicest people that you'll meet on this planet uh, live in Ireland. I, I'll just say that they they treat me so well over there. Uh, but anyway, Donna Dunn is another one, and uh, quite frankly, I I was I was blown away when I when I when I pulled up a few of her videos. I wasn't expecting that voice to come out of her. Uh, a beautiful girl, uh, but uh, you know you. You've been blown away by somebody's voice before. You heard it and it just 
you, 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 you were expecting something good. You weren't expecting that. Now, the same thing with Kathy. I, I was expecting a good voice, okay? I, I looked, saw the videos, saw... I mean, I, I did a glance at these videos, and I saw the subscribers, and and I saw uh, the interaction they were having. And and I figured that maybe they were looking in the right mirror when they got on YouTube, and they, 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 uh, they had the talent to be doing everything they're doing. Uh, and they didn't have any... Uh, reservations about you know how to accomplish that but anyway two girls just phenomenal phenomenal voices very very talented it's amazing how many talented people really are out there uh, so when you think about making it because you always hear that thing about people wanting to make it I'm not even sure I know what that means anymore uh, the these people are these two girls are having an impact on people uh, I don't know if that's not making it. I, I, I need to, I need to give you a new dictionary uh, because the one you've got's not right. Okay, all right now. Love those girls. They're they're just fantastic. All right now, let's go to B seven and have a party. Man, this this whole one C here. And I've already taken up about five eight minutes or whatever talking about that, but it is worth it. Yeah, but please check these links in the description. And if, if for any reason you don't know, there's a button there that says, or a little deal that says show more, hit that show more and, and it'll open up what, what I put in the description in case you didn't know that. I was on YouTube for a long time before I figured out I could hit show more and I could actually see what people wrote about what they're presenting on, okay? So to speak. All right. So we're going to walk through this from the very beginning, and uh, and I replaced the strings on my sweetheart today, and uh, and so uh, which is great because I got to put some manels on here. I had some diaderos on here, and wow, that's a decent string. I am a massive fan of Martin 12's uh, retro, and the retros are manel, and I believe those are pre World War II design strings, and they just ring. Oh, gosh, I love them. All right. Enough of all that. So here we go. I'm going to walk it all the way up. Go to, go from E, you know, and we'll go to A7. We'll come back to E. And then I'm going to show you what we do to get into the B7 and wind that B7 up to go back into the E. Because there's going to be round two of this, which is not exactly like round one. Okay? And as I said, this is just a tune developed... To help you with dexterity, maybe finger coordination, that kind of thing. Uh, that's what this is for. I'll, I'll develop another one, and uh, we'll do a another video that's a little different and a, with a few different challenges. And then, but once you get a few of these, you'll do what I did, which was I just turned into a, a noodler. <laughs> So we're going to play this song through all the way once, and then I'll come back to it, uh, and we'll we'll begin to do the breakdown on the B7, okay? Uh, but there's there's two rounds to this, and the second round's just a tad bit different. That's all. So. Okay, so now we're coming out of the E into the B7, right? So when we come out of that E, that last thing we did on that E was that nudge and that number four bass note. Just like that. Kind of makes you do this a little bit, doesn't it? Now you know all these guitar people make all these faces while they're playing, right? Me, I just sit there and drool with my mouth open. But anyway. All right, so... Once you do that in the E chord, drop that little finger off, let him up, give him a rest or her, and then you're going to strut. You're going to take these fingers and swap them to your B7 because you guys know all know how to make chords. And you're just going to swap that E to a B7 right there, 
leaving your pinky up, and you're going to strike number two open, your number five bass note, which is your lead bass note, because that's your B note. You're going to pull up on the number three string, and we all know that's our four finger, right? Right? And we'll properly mute this after we get done. I don't want to mute it while we're doing it, uh, while I'm showing it to you, because then you can't hear the note all that well. So. Then pinch number four and number one with your pinky down on number two. Okay, let's take it up to that point out of that E, okay? I'll do it as slow as I can do it. <laughs> I'll give it a shot anyway. That's it right there. Okay. Now, all of this stuff seems a lot more tricky when you're slowing it down. And you go, my gosh, there's a lot of steps in there. Uh, it, this progression that I'm doing is actually a little more natural than it sounds when you slow it down. When you slow it down, everything sounds tremendously more difficult. But you have to slow things down. If you speed up, like we've talked about in the other videos, and you try to get too fast, uh, your, 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 your progress is going to get hampered. Uh, Tommy Emmanuel said this, and I think he's, not that my opinion matters, but uh, he is absolutely right. Uh, I, I'd rather do a song slowly and have it properly articulated than to speed it up and just run all over yourself. You're going to hear me do that a lot. I'm horrible about that sort of thing. You know, getting too fast on the guitar. mistakes did you hear in there? I promise you there was at least 50. Okay. There was at least 50 of not articulating those notes because I was going so fast. No bueno, por favor. Okay. Uh, this is, it's not good when you do that. So you have to slow these things down. All right. So let's do that. We're coming out of E. Okay, number two open, number five bass note. Ah. <laughs> this is comical, isn't it? I'm, 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 if this is teaching, I don't know what uh, not teaching would look like. All right. Number five, number three, pluck up, pinch, four, and six with your pinky on the second fret, number one string. And and the and the the tempo of this thing is tempo, is that the right word? I don't know. Maybe it is. 
tempos like this. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the tempo is going to be. Do, 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 do. Right? I'm, I shouldn't have sang. That was bad. I'm sorry. Open. Number two. Number five bass note. Number three string. Pull up. Four and number one with your pinky on number one string, number two fret. That's, that's what the speed's going to end up being. Or we can slow it down a little bit. Everybody get that? All right, now, if you can bring your thumb over to pick up that number six bass note on the second fret, if your thumb can lay on there, you're going to find this easier to do, sure. <laughs> okay. Now, it would be better if you knew both ways with your thumb over and being able to use this middle finger to bounce back and forth between five and six. But if you're new to finger style, uh, your, bass, your bass player is going to kill you. Now that's not as difficult as it is when you're trying to do a melody with it. At which point, everything seems to fall apart mentally, right? In our minds. But if you can loop your thumb over there, loop your thumb over there. And we'll, we'll finish this up. But I'm going to show it moving the middle finger for those who, well, maybe they, maybe they got smaller hands and they just can't get their hand around there to get on that second fret number six bass note okay so here's our basic beat you're going to pick up number two strike number five pull up on number three then you're going to lay your little finger down there on the second fret first string and you're going to pinch your number four bass note okay now we're going to get into bringing in that number six bass note because once you strike number six i'm going to ask you a question if you strike the number six bass note what is the next bass note? What string number? And if you didn't say four, that's a problem. After you strike your number five bass note, your next bass note is always a four. After you strike number six, your next bass note is always number four. Then you're going to go back to five. So it's five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four. Okay? It's always going to be like that. So if you get lost, when you're doing this is kind of something to get once it gets planted in your mind uh you're you're mentally you will know it and when you hit a b7 and you go to doing bass notes you won't have to think about which bass note do i hit you'll know if you just hit number six number four is next uh, mentally your your mind will know this okay and so that's why these habits are really good to get formed into a six a five four six four five four six four Five, four, six, four. Always a four. Every time you strike a bass note, the next bass note's four. Then the next bass note, then it's four again. The next bass note, then it's four again. Okay. The only thing you have to keep track of is whether you just struck six or whether you just struck five. Right? All right. Now, so it's... Ah. So let's start at the very beginning of this and take it all the way up to that last pinch on that B7. Right there. Oh, you want to do it with me? Let's do that. 
All right, so we'll count to four, and then we'll start on number five beat. I don't know if that's right. Maybe we should count to three and start on number four. Who knows? One of you music majors out there can tell me what kind of count I ought to be given on this. I don't know anything about counts. Uh, the last band I played in, which was like, I don't know, 30 years ago, I think, uh, uh, the drummer always used to shake his head at me, you know? I mean, I think he loved me. Uh <laughs> But, but he used to shake his head at me. He'd go, Randy, just look at me. Okay? Just keep your eye on me. So here we go. Let's start at the beginning. Stop right there. Okay, so real slow, it's going to be... Go back to that number three string. After you do that, open two, five bass note. Strike up on number three. Lay your pinky down, second fret. You know the drill down there on number one. Pull up again on number three. Then you're either going to move this middle finger up to that number six string, number two fret to pick up that bass note, or you're going to try to do it with your thumb. I hope you can do it with your thumb, but if you can't, do it with this middle finger. Later, if you can do it with your thumb, you need to still learn how to do it with this middle finger because there's going to be times when it, well, take my word for it, there's going to be times when you need this middle finger to move up there, <clears throat> even if you can do the thumb. So, you're going to do the nudge again. Yeah. At this point, your little finger is going to be starting to get a little irritated with you, but they'll get over it once they get all this down, and they'll be happy again. Okay, so let's let's take it up to that point where we're nudging with that bass note held down, okay? And do this slowly for a little while. You know, I, I, I know the feeling of wanting to get there quickly. Anything you can do really fast doesn't have super dividends most of the time unless you run in a race or something, you know. We're not running a race. We're all in here together. Uh, we want each other to do well. Don't get in a hurry. When you're practicing this throughout the week, slow down, okay? Fingers get to hurting too bad. Put it down for about 10 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Put it down for a little while. Not, not a couple of days, but a little while. So I'm going to do that a little faster, but I'm going to do it with my middle finger because I, I, I think I sometimes do it with it. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've got my thumb over. Right there, for those of you that can do the thumb over. Uh, and then, uh, for those of you that can't, you're going to have to use this middle finger. Now, I've seen Tommy Emanuel do this where he holds both those strings down with that middle finger. I can kind of do that, but kind of doesn't work on the guitar. So, kind of is not going to get it. So, uh, I don't know. I the ends of his fingers must be like little hammers or something. But anyway, let's do this together. Okay. Open again. You're open on that number two. And you're hitting that number four bass note. So, 
We're pulling up on that. We're, we're nudging that number two string on the number three fret. Let's do it without the bass note for a second. To strike down after we nudge because remember we're nudging on the bass note up here then we're dropping off dropping that little finger off and that number two string is now open then we're striking the number four bass note back up on that number three okay okay now I've watched other finger style guitar teachers uh, do something similar and they kind of go through it once and you, it's hard to see their fingers where they're at sometimes and and um, God bless them but uh, uh, <laughs> You know, there's there, there's a few assumptions made with a lot of people who teach guitar. So from that, I kind of took some mental notes. Uh, if I decide to teach this, uh, I need to tell everybody where my fingers are at all times because it looks like right there, my, my it, right there, it looks like my middle finger's laying, I meant my little finger is laying down somewhere, right? I don't have it laying down. I've got it just off the string. <laughs> But it looks like it's down and when you're trying to learn this stuff uh, that 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 just doesn't work because you're like well I know he's got his finger down there but it doesn't sound right to me now I, I, I've told you before in other videos I will tell you where my fingers are all right so uh, in the B7 you're utilizing all four of your fingers and your thumb as well and if you're able to uh, but you're going to use all four of these uh, fingers on your picking, on your fretting hand. So you're going to use all four of them. Just got to get right with it. I promise you this will come to you though, and you will get it. And eventually you'll get, you'll get pretty decent at it, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's some things you can do with that. I, th I think I put together a whole arrangement just out of that B7 picking pattern one time. That involves uh, B and... Uh, yeah, B and E. No, B. G flat or F sharp. No, is it F sharp? Let me see. It's an F sharp 7, I think, is what that's called. It's, you know. But anyway, and then it goes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the V7 is kind of a cool chord for finger stylist uh, guitar players, I'd say. All right, so let's do this again. Let's walk through this. Number two, bass note number five, number three pickup. You're in the B7 shape right here. Your little fingers not on the fretboard at the moment. Now it's on the fretboard. Number one, number number one string, number two fret. Pinch your number four bass note and the number one string. up on number three move your middle finger up if you're not using your thumb to the number two fret number six string lay your pinky finger down 
on number two string, number three fret, and nudge. So nudge it up, pinch and nudge, then hit it open, number two open, and pick up your number four bass note because you just did your number six bass note. So if you just, if you did your number six and your nudge, let off, hit your number four bass note, what's your next bass note? Number five, right? Okay, let's start this again. Strike number one, number five next. Ah. Pick up on number three. Pinch, one and four. Little fingers down on number two fret. Number one string. You say, well, can't I just leave my little finger down there? Yeah. But you're going to have to pick that little feller up, okay? Pull up on number three. Move your little finger to the number two fret. Num I'm sorry, number two string, number three fret. And pinch your bass note up here on top, number two string, number, number six. Number six string, number two fret. Now look. For what you're going to end up doing in finger style, uh, you're going to look back at this and go, okay, that wasn't challenging. This is challenging. <laughs> uh, but the reward is worth this effort. I promise you, the reward is worth the effort. If, if, I, if I had gone as far as I could ever go on a guitar right now, I'd be okay with that. I, I'm not okay with that, but I mean, I, I, I think I could be okay with that if I knew that was my limit. I can pick guitar up every day and play it all day long now. <laughs> and and that's what I like to do. Uh, I can't do it all day long, but uh, but I would like to. Uh, certainly on the weekends, I've got a guitar in my hand all the time. All right. And at night, I've got a guitar in my hands. And sometimes during the day, when I catch a little time, I will pick my guitar up. It's out. All right. We could do a rock song out of that. All right. Let's see if we can do that together. Let's not go that fast. If you're new to finger style, you may have a struggle with that. Okay. Now you're going to pick up on number three. Move your, if you're not using your thumb, move your middle finger up to number two fret, number six string, to get that bass note. Lay your pinky finger on the third fret, second string, and nudge again. Nudge that little, little fella. Just a little nudge, not a big nudge. You don't have to do a big nudge here. Seems like every time you do that, it's like... It's like when somebody runs uh, their fingers across chalkboard, you're going, you know. Now, once you do that, let it off and hit it open and strike your number four bass note. Because number four is your next bass note. You did number six. It has to be your next bass note. Number four is your next. One more time. Pick up on number three, pinch, number number uh, five, yeah, and number two, with your pinky finger down on the number three fret, number two string. And then move it down and strike your number four bass note. Like that. 
then hit it open, pull it up, pull your little finger up, hit it up, hit number two open, and strike your number six bass note. And then pick up on that number three again. Okay? Finish it off with that number four bass note, just like we did in the E and just like we did in the in the A, okay? Okay. Now it's funny how when you watch somebody playing some, it doesn't look like it, maybe there's that much going on. I don't know. Uh, I really don't anymore, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't remember, but I think when I first saw them play a song, I thought, well, it, it, it doesn't look like they're doing a whole lot there. But then when they start breaking that stuff down, I'm like, holy Moses, you know, what are they doing? All right, so, all right, now, and then when you're trying to break things down, you can't really hear the song, right? You can't hear the tune uh, when you're just breaking things down. So you may get the notes down, but until you're doing it in time or hearing it in time, if we break the notes down and then we do it in time, then it begins to, things begin to light up a little bit. And you go, ah, oh, see how it all fits now. And there's a whole lot more in there than I thought there was, right? I got to tell you, I got a lot of respect for anybody that does fingerstyle. I really do. Not me. But I'm talking about people who really do fingerstyle, right? Uh, I, I'm I'm just a, a novice amateur <clears throat> at best, and uh, <clears throat> you and I are right here together tonight, only because I really enjoy doing this, and apparently I have no shame because I'm on YouTube doing this. Okay, so you know, I, I remember years ago I saw this uh, this guy, you know, he was an older gentleman. <clears throat> he had on a pair of tennis white tennis shoes and. No, he had on a pair of dress shoes, black socks, and a pair of shorts. And I told my wife, I said, if I ever get to a place to where I'm walking out the door in that, short of it being the only ones I have, uh, shoot me. <laughs> and now I'm finding myself at a place where I'm going, you know what? Those loafers probably wouldn't look too bad in a pair of shorts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They'll, no, I'll be 95 if I live that long. You're not catching me in a pair of loafers, black socks, and a pair of shorts out in public. Not if I got something else to wear, okay? God bless them if that's all they got to wear. I'm, I'm, I apologize in advance, but uh, I, I think they deliberately dressed that way, not because uh, they didn't have the wardrobe. All right. Now, I'm going to play this all the way through up until that B7, exiting that B7, so you can hear it all together, okay? I guess I should have used my middle finger for the bass note. Let's do it again. And then we're just going to go back to E. And we'll we'll wind some of this up in part D, okay? Now, uh, now I'm going to go back and review this and pull out all of the craziness that was in there. And we'll hone this down into something that I hope you find productive, that it will help you. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So uh, I believe this is 1C. I think I put out a 1, a 1A, and a 1B, and, and that sounds about right. So the breakdown of that B7 one more time.
Now you don't have to nudge him after you've nudged him on that. Now for those of you that can put your finger on there, one of the reasons I like doing it on this particular song is I don't know what that reason is. I mean, I just started out doing it that way. If I'd started it out this way, my fingers wouldn't look all cockeyed when I'm trying to hit that bass note. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a little tune that I kind of diddled up, I guess. Uh, is that a word? Diddle? That is now. All right. So uh, anyway, it's in my dictionary. If you want to borrow it, let me know. I'll loan it to you. If you need a description of a diddle, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what that is too. But I was, uh, one place I don't use that thumb, and it really does depend on the, what, what tune you're doing. So mm -hmm. if uh, I did a review on uh, uh, this guitar, and in that guitar, I kind of, uh, no, I, I didn't actually do it in that. Maybe it was the Epiphone Excellente review. But anyway, uh, I'd kind of sometime back just came up with a little diddle, and uh, which I plan to uh doing a noodling series, uh, teach people how to do that. But it kind of goes like this, and it involves the B7. And and to be honest with you, I diddled it, and I still can't get through this thing right without my, my hands starting to hurt a little bit. So, And I don't practice it that much anymore, so I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back to practicing it. But it goes like this. It goes... Let me do it again. You can see, I mean, I'm still, my coordination's off with it and all that because I just, I've only done it recently or just a few times and, uh, uh, that's one of those tunes that you probably ought to play pretty frequently, you know, much like a... Uh, uh, one of those Merle Travis tunes, you know. Uh, there's some things about that song that kind of crawl all over me as I'm trying to play it just because uh, it, it deals me a little bit of mis misery. It's just a mental thing, but... Uh, you know how it is. Once you get a little mental thing in there, then uh, you're you're a long time overcoming it. All right. Either way, I think I've got enough material here. I can edit out all the ridiculousness and give you something that uh, hopefully will help you. More than anything, more than anything, I want you to have fun playing guitar. Okay. If you move on and end up making a living at doing something like this, I am really happy for you. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Uh, I mean, I love playing the guitar, but I also love what I do for a living, you know, and I'm getting paid for that. Uh, I really do. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing what I do. Uh, I, I, as I got older in life, I mean, my early days, I, I took what I could get. I had to feed, I had a family to feed and I did whatever I had to, to make a living. Uh, these days, uh, I, it, it is a little bit more of a choice. Uh, uh, however, I would like to think uh, that I was placed where I'm at in life. Uh, and uh, and if I believe uh, what I have read, uh, I was placed where I'm at. Uh, I was. And I know that to be true. So I have no reservations about that. I made a lot of bad decisions in my life and a bunch of them I would love to take back. A lot of things I would love to change. Uh, uh, a lot of wrong that I would like to right. I'm sure you feel the same way. Uh, I, well, I hope you don't. Uh, I hope you don't have any of that, that that you have to live with. So, I have to be careful. I'll start talking and next thing you know, we'll be here all night. I sure appreciate you joining. Uh, it just... It, it really does. It, it really makes me happy to know that uh, uh, you're learning something new and it, maybe I could help guide you there. Uh, that's fantastic. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. God bless. We'll see you next time.